Hey everyone, this is Blitz from Anacene. Thank you for watching. This video is to announce the publication of my custom campaign on Wargroove, the Burgundian Wars. As I promised at the end of my playthrough of Wargroove earlier this year, I said I was going to make a custom campaign, and now I'm here to deliver. It's been several months, but um, it was a really, really fun time making the campaign. And um, I'm here to share it with you, and I hope you'll really enjoy this. Um, I'm going to give you a preview of it, and then I'm, I'm uh, in the description for this video, you will see the download code for this. So this actually went live about like three weeks ago, to be honest. I uploaded it, but um, just didn't have a chance to make this video yet. But um, yeah, let's, let's jump right into it. So the subject of the campaign is the Burgundian Wars, which is a historical conflict that was fought in the late 1400s between the Duchy of Burgundy, as you can see here, led by Charles the Bold. He's, he is the, um, the villain of my campaign. So in, in the historical context, he got into a war with his neighbors in the Holy Roman Empire, um, Austria, and the Swiss Confederacy. And uh, it eventually led to his downfall and death and the end of the Duchy of Burgundy. So this is a map of the Duchy at the height of its power when he took over. And um, it basically grew to this size, starting from just here, the region known as Burgundy today, to expanding to all of this territory within about 100 years or so. So it was a... It was an upstart nation. Um, it was a big thorn in the side of France and everyone else around them. And uh, it, you know, led to an epic conclusion of uh, a clash between the Confederacy, the Swiss Confederacy, the Holy Roman Empire, um, like I said, the downfall of the Duchy of Burgundy. So this campaign has a series of historical battles that kind of chronicle what happened in the conflict. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open it up here. And it's a pretty short campaign. There's only nine scenarios in it, and actually two of them are optional. Uh, I'll go through them one at a time. Obviously, I'm not going to play them here, because uh, that would take a long time. But uh, if, there's, if there's significant interest, or, or even just a few people asking for it, um, I would be happy to play this campaign publish it to this, you know, this channel here, and you can kind of see like how I play this campaign. I spent a lot of time doing play testing, balancing, play testing, designing, and of course a lot of historical research. So this campaign's not meant to be a simulation of history. It's not meant to be exactly historically accurate. I mean, look at this map. Like this is obviously not a map of Europe, right? So it's kind of, you know, it is what it is. But the point is, I tried to make the game uh, compelling, I tried to make it fun, and I tried to make it a real challenge. So this campaign, right from the get-go when I was designing it, was it's not meant for the faint of heart. Um, this is not going to be easy. In fact, I in the description for the campaign, when you look it up online on the like download custom content, you'll see I say it has high complexity and hard difficulty. Um, now, of course, you know, maybe you, you won't find it so difficult, or maybe you really will. Um, I, I sincerely hope that you find this campaign, if you play it, to be a challenge. Um, but, but like I said, I've play-tested it for months. I play-tested it as I was developing, and then I spent, like, an entire month just playing it over and over again. I've played all these scenarios, like, multiple times, trying to get just the right feel for it. Um... So hopefully, you know, you, you find this a good challenge and maybe you'll learn something from this too because, you know, I'm a big believer that history writes some of the best stories. Um, it's not taking anything away from people who are really creative and creating custom content with their own original stories or taking the characters from this game and, and making campaigns with them. That's great. And I'm, I'm so happy that this game has this feature where you can create campaigns and share it. It's something that I always wish that Advance Wars had back when I played that game. Um, 
So yeah, let, let's let's jump into it. So so the first battle is actually a prologue, and it's not actually part of the Burgundian Wars, so to speak. Um, it's actually a conflict in France in uh, 1465, um, known as the War of the Public Wheel. And essentially, the King of France found himself at war with his subjects, um, and this took place um, a couple decades after the end of the Hundred Years' War. Uh, so we start here with the Battle of Montelary, and uh, I'll give you a preview. So what I did for this campaign was I, um, I did some research online and looked for battle maps if I could find them. And as you can see, this is a really detailed battle map with the French troops at the bottom and the Burgundian troops at the top. Um, and then I tried to recreate it. So I went ahead and, you know, where I saw, like, there's, like, okay, forests and ridge lines and such. I used a lot of, in this campaign, I use a lot of mountains in this game as ridge lines. And um, forests, obviously, and roads and, and rivers, they are what they are. Um, yeah, so this is, this is the first mission. And um, a lot of these tactical battles um, are... You have a deployment of troops, and you just got to fight the battle with who you have. Um, so, I'll be honest. You know, full disclosure, this is not the kind of like war groove experience where you're going to be like, you know, building units at bases, pumping out units at barracks, and like, you know, f fighting for control over neutral parts of the map. All these maps are going to have like kind of a historical setup, and they're going to be more of like a a battle kind of like a. So it's not going to be like a campaign, mini campaign style, like making units at bases. Um, you just got to work with what you're given and complete your objectives. In this case, uh, defeat the enemy commander or take down their stronghold. And you got to break through their defensive line to do it. And as you can see, it probably looks intimidating. Um, and get used to that if you play this. I've designed these scenarios so that you should feel like, oh man, how am I going to do this? But my hope is that when you do succeed in these scenarios, you'll feel that you accomplished something. Um, but this is what I'm talking about with high complexity and difficulty. Uh, you'll just see that there's a lot of units on the board, and there's actually going to be reinforcements involved in the battle. So, um, good luck with it. You know what I mean? Like it's. I, I hope that you find this a, a real challenge. Um, this scenario is actually one of the more straightforward ones. It's just uh, take your troops, break through the enemy line, and take take out their camp. Pretty simple, right? Um, maybe we'll see. Anyway, that's I mean that's about it for this um, for this scenario here. There's not really uh, I have the description here and. Um, the, the AI in this scenario controls the teal units, but for the most part, you won't really have AI allies. So I, I, there is some scenario like map design diversity, which is like what was really cool about this um, historical conflict and turning it into a game um, is that there's like a, there was a bunch of different, you know, a lot of like sieges, a lot of open battles, a lot of diversity. Um, so it, it makes for a really interesting history and a really interesting setting for this game. So that's the first scenario. Um, the second scenario is actually a hypothetical scenario. So this is the first one that's an optional one. It's the Battle of Paris, the same year as the previous mission. Um, in reality, the Burgundians and the uh, the League of the Public Wheel, which consisted of a lot of French subjects, uh, laid siege to the town of Paris, or city, I guess it's the capital city, not just the town, um, while the king was away getting reinforcements. So in this scenario, you're playing as the defenders, and you just gotta defend against an onslaught of enemies trying to break through your walls and get to the center of the city and take down your stronghold. Um, you need to hold out until the king arrives. Um, when he does arrive, then you'll need to expel all of the attackers by taking down all of their barracks spread throughout the map. So 
For this one, you do actually have the ability to produce some units in a base, and um, you'll have to be really wise about how you use your resources, because as you can see, you're definitely outnumbered, and you're not going to want to lose, especially like those ballistas, um, you're not going to want to lose them. So in this, you'll see in my campaign, I use a lot of ballistas. They represent, um, they represent like field artillery, like uh, field guns, cannons, etc. Uh, whereas if you see trebuchets, they represent siege artillery, like trebuchets, right? So um, that's the kind of thing with the ballista. Since this game doesn't have like a cannon unit, it's it, that's basically what it is. In, you know, and it's and it's actually pretty accurate, I think, because like the the field guns in the 1400s, you know, if they got a direct hit, they were devastating. But they, you know, they had a long way to go for the technology to be really accurate and everything. So when they hit units for not a huge amount of damage, that's actually, I in my opinion, kind of an accurate portrayal of the effectiveness of artillery. In the, in the 1400s. I mean, I don't, that's just my opinion. I'm not a military historian. I'm just a hobbyist, a guy that likes history. So I could be wrong about that. But yeah, like I said, this is a hypothetical scenario. It's also optional. Um, in my opinion, this is one of the harder ones for you to play. Uh, the reason why I made it optional is since it is hypothetical, I didn't want you to like feel compelled to play something that isn't like a real battle but I hope if you know you do play this and um, you find it really interesting and challenging um, that's about all there is to it uh, the next scenario is the Battle of Harry Court so this is one of the earlier scenarios uh, or earlier battles in the actual proper Burgundian Wars um, it was fought on the edge of Burgundian territory, and it was a Swiss incursion into uh, Burgundian territory at the town of Harrycourt. So I actually could not find a, a battle map when I was doing my research for this. Couldn't find a battle map, um, so I ended up just using an uh, actual map of like the, the modern town of it, and then just kind of estimated what the medieval battlefield would look like. So... Again, um, taking some liberties here, not uh, not meant to be an exact portrayal. Um, but in here, so you're playing as the Black Troops, um, which is the Swiss Confederacy. So uh, w the different colors represent the different like nations involved in the conflict, and I try to stay consistent. So blue, when you see them, is, is the Royal French military. Red is always the Duchy of Burgundy. Black will always be the Swiss Confederacy. Um, and then there's a couple other uh, colors you'll see in another scenario, other scenarios. And, I, and I, I make sure like I explain like who they are. So in this one you're descending from the mountains and you're invading this town which is relatively lightly guarded by Burgundian troops you'll want to take over that uh, stronghold. Once you do, you all the t uh, buildings in the town become neutral, in including the barracks. So you'll want to just go straight for that stronghold and knock it out as soon as you can, because as soon as you get an attack range of these defenders, these troops from the neighboring villages are going to come in and try to attack you. Um, so this is kind of like you need to quickly get into the town, take it over, and then start using the barracks to produce troops and fight off um, waves of enemy reinforcements that are trying to take this town back from you. Historically, the uh, Swiss laid siege to the town and a Burgundian army came and then they fought off the army and then took over the town. So in this, I actually kind of changed the order of events. I have it where you take over the town and then fight off an army trying to take it back. Um, it just ended up working better as a scenario like that. So again, not, not exact simulation of history, but um, still hopefully you'll find it to be an interesting scenario.
Next one here, we have way off over here is the Siege of Noise. So when I was when I was positioning these on the board, I was trying to like use the relative position of like where these actual locations are in the real world. So like, you know, this battle south of Paris, this is supposed to be Paris. This is like the edge of France or the edge of the Duchy of Burgundy historically. Um, and then this would be like Germany over here or the, or the, you know, Holy Roman Empire, Germanic States. And then in the mountains here would be Switzerland. And then from here, I just kind of, these three, I didn't really use relative positioning. I just used it based on the geography, like being by bodies of water, which you'll see the significance of that later. But, um, yeah, next one is Siege of Noise. So again, I didn't have a... Um, actual battle map, but I did find this uh, pretty cool looking medieval map of the of the city. Um, so the history behind this was um, Charles the Bold, first and foremost, um, he actually considered the war at the onset anyway, to, his most important objective was to defeat his enemies in Germany. He actually wasn't too worried about the Swiss at the beginning, so he was trying to take down uh, the city of Cologne, which was his enemy, and Neuss was allied to Cologne. So in order to protect his flank, he laid siege to this city. In the meantime, the Holy Roman Empire Imperial Army um, came to relieve the siege. So in the yellow, the yellow troops are the Holy Roman Empire Imperial Army, and um, that's who you're playing as. And so. Um, again, this one, the setup for this scenario, um, the map layout is kind of based on like as much geography as I could get. You're looking at modern maps, and I think the river might have actually been like rerouted a little bit. I'm not exactly sure, but this is kind of an estimation. And as you can see, like the kind of the setup of the city, if I rotate this, you know, it's kind of that's kind of what I was going for with the with the city setup and the walls around it. Um, yeah, so, and, and you know, this was actually not really like a major battle per se. It more ended in like a skirmish and then a truce between the Burgundians and the Imperial Army. But in this case, um, the Burgundians are actually going to try and assault the city, which is not, they did do some fights. They did try to breach the gates a little bit and didn't have any success, and then they ended up just having like a several month long siege that ended in defeat for them. So it was kind of a, um, it was one of the first like major setbacks that the Burgundians suffered in the war. So this one's a race against time. You'll want to get your commander to the stronghold in the city so that you can take control of the city and its production facilities. And then you're going to want to drive off the assaulting troops. So you got to break through their bridgeheads, and um, you don't really have time to sit around in this one. Speed is of the utmost importance in this scenario. Um, just keep that in mind when you play the scenario. You you got to move quickly. Okay. Um, next we have um, a actually the second um, optional scenario. It's the conquest of Vod and. Um, this one's actually like a mini campaign because it's massive. I made this I made this map to kind of look like the region of Vod. And as you can see, this is like a really large map. So Lake Geneva at the bottom. Um, and some of these cities you see on the map there, um, some of them are castle towns. Other ones are just towns. Um, so in this scenario... You're playing as the Swiss Confederacy, and you're trying to conquer the region from the Duchy of Savoy. So Savoy was uh, one of the biggest allies of, of the Duchy of Burgundy, and they actually had control of this region. Um, at the time, this, this region, even though modern day it's part of Switzerland, it, it was not actually part of the old Swiss Confederacy until like the late 1400s or early 1500s. So... Um, this is a huge scenario, as you can see. Um, it's also optional. 
So the goal here is to destroy every enemy stronghold. If you do that, you secure the region. So you'll see that the enemy doesn't serve with any troops, but they're going to be producing them, and they have a lot of income. Also, for all of these scenarios in this campaign, um, the income modifier is reduced. So in a lot of these, you only are going to be getting like uh, 20 or 30 gold per village, not the standard 100. Um, that's part of the, the scenario design. So, yeah, this is the... Um, this is the conquest of Vod, and the timeline for this was like the summer. Uh, it took an entire summer for this, so it's not like one particular battle. This is definitely the highest level um, scenario here. Moving on, we have the the Battle of the Planta. Uh, or on the planta. I've seen of the planta on the planta. Um, essentially, it was a. This was actually kind of like a sideshow um, of the Burgundian Wars, but it was no less important. Um, this battle actually had uh, huge ramifications on the outcome of the war. So, some uh, Swiss uh, states that. Kind of, I don't know the exact details of the history. They kind of were and kind of weren't part of the Confederation at the time. Um, but this is the town of Sion. And um, on the other side of the river is Duchy of Savoy territory. And then this is Sion territory. Um, and so the Savoyards are going to attack you with a massive army, making an incursion. And you can see on the right here, like the red lines for, you know, the attack lines. So that's where the AI is going to do. They're going to attack you kind of along those lines. Um, you got to put up a desperate defense. You got some production facilities here. You're also going to get some reinforcements, but they're going to take a while to show up. So you need to fight some delaying action. And really, um, your commander's groove is going to be essential to victory in this scenario. Actually, a lot of the scenarios, um, the commander's groove is going to is going to come into play big time. Um, after you've repelled the assault, you need to take over every town uh, right here that I'm showing on the screen. Um, actually, you don't need to take over those four. I, I actually have it like highlight which towns you need to take, but all you have to do is just. Um, repel them, and then take over the border town, and, and you win the battle. Um, so like I said, this is like kind of like a sideshow, but like I said, it was a major, major uh, ramifications on the war, because with this battle, the Duchy of Savoy was effectively knocked out of the war, and um, it cut off the... Duchy of Burgundy and Charles the Bold's supply lines from his allies in uh, Italy. So with that, he couldn't get any more aid from his allies, um, which which uh, changed kind of like the his his overall strategy for the war. So with that situation, um, the next year he went and invaded uh, Swiss territory and laid siege to the city of Grandson, which you can actually see in the Vaud campaign scenario. As you can see, this is the lake um, in the northeast corner of that map. Um, so the scenario here is you got troops and you're trying to break through these Burgundian lines to relieve the siege at Grandson, or so you think it's still under siege. Actually, the Burgundians had captured the town and uh, Duke Charles the Bold had the defenders uh, brutally massacred um, for putting up a fight against him. Because one thing that he liked to do was uh, massacre his enemies to try and instill fear in his enemies. But it, it had the opposite effect on the Swiss warriors. They were actually more united um, because of it, because of their anger at the Burgundians. So... Like I said, your your uh, commander's groove is going to come into play big time here, um, and your your goal is simple: just get to the town and capture the stronghold. Uh, and you'll see that the enemy has production facilities, and you got to work with the troops you have. You're going to get reinforcements, um, but you, 
it's essential that you don't waste your troops. So this is um, this is where the campaign I think starts to get really challenging too, because they got defensive lines of cannons, which as you can see here, there's the defensive line of cannons, and he also had some to the south of the starting position in the Swiss too. Okay. Um, after that disastrous defeat that the Duke of Burgundy suffered at that battle, because um, historically his army was completely routed in that battle, um, he came back and he laid siege to the town of Merton, also known as Marat. Uh, depends on which language you're speaking, but um, this is very close. It's like just west of Bern, which was the... Uh, main city of the Swiss Confederacy and is now the capital of Switzerland today. Um, so here you can see again tried to as accurately as I could um, set up the disposition of troops at the start of the battle. So, th so the big thing here was that while they were laying siege to the town they also were only weakly defending their uh, perimeter because uh, Charles the Bold didn't have good reconnaissance and didn't know exactly when the Swiss were going to arrive to attack him. So he had his troops kind of resting. Um, and then the Swiss showed up. And then he's like, oh, shoot. Everybody grab your weapons and try to get to the front line. So in this scenario, I mean, this line is not exactly weakly held because I wanted this to be a challenging scenario. But... Um, you gotta you can't sit around again like he's got production facilities and he's and that represents his camp and his troops like hastily mobilizing trying to get to the front line so so it's going to be imperative for you to break through the enemy's defensive line and then isolate the siege units um and the objective for this scenario is to annihilate the enemy army so the the swiss um who were angered by with the Charles the Bold and the Burgundians had done at Grandson by executing the garrison, they were determined to give them no quarter in the next battle. So to represent that in this scenario, you have to wipe out every single enemy unit to win this scenario. So kind of brutal, but uh, that's your objective for this. And finally, the final scenario, the Battle of Nancy, which is where Charles the Bold died. So after getting absolutely wrecked in those two battles in Switzerland, um, he desperately put together one last army and, and tried to focus on uh, the Duchy of Lorraine, I think it was. Um, and, the, and the city of Nancy was uh, the capital of it or one of the major cities there. Um, and the uh, Lorraine troops and their Swiss allies. So in this scenario, yellow is actually not the Imperial Army. It's the it's the troops of the Duchy of Lorraine, and um, then you have Swiss Confederation soldiers. And your goal: defeat Charles the Bold himself. So um, you're gonna have. He's got his guys, as you can see, just like in this scenario. He's got his guys between the river and the, and the trees. And um, he's got his defensive artillery line uh, set up. And uh, yeah, you're going to have to, and you're gonna, by the way, you're going to be fighting in snowy and foggy conditions. So just like the actual battle. So it's going to be important for you to be very careful how you approach this one. Now you do have, there, you do notice that there's a bunch of neutral towns. So you can capture those towns and they'll give you income. You can't produce any new units, but you can use your mages who represent healers to um, keep your troops in the fight. So as you can see, all these scenarios have um, the cherry stone units from Wargroove. Um, the reason why I did this is because they, they look like the European medieval soldiers. And, and the unit selection is limited because this is a um, historical campaign. So essentially, every scenario you're going to see commanders, swordsmen, pikemen, archers, mages that represent 
healers, um, but they can also attack. So if you want to throw in an, a small element of fantasy, say magic user is fine, whatever. That's not what I, that's not my intention, but it it's how the game's units are. And then of course cavalry and then artillery. Um, there's no 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 naval units. There were no naval battles in this war and uh, no air units because there was no air combat in the mid uh, you know medieval times so um, yeah that's that's about it um I my my strong recommendation if you play this campaign is turn off battle animations uh, it'll save you a lot of time because these like I said these are these are pretty complex battles so um, you know, if 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 I end up playing these and like recording and uploading to this channel, uh, you'll probably see that these scenarios are going to take me probably like an hour each to play. Uh, maybe you play quicker than I do because I like to do a lot of thinking. But um, yeah, that's about it. So. Um, Thank you very much for watching this, uh, and I hope I've piqued your interest. Uh, I hope that you will download this campaign. Like I said, in the description for this video is the download code. You can also look it up by the by the campaign name, which is the Burgundian Wars. I have it listed as version 1.0, so in case that I do want to make updates, like for example, add a couple like uh, side or backstory scenarios um because there were a couple battles that i left out that weren't actually part of the wars but they were battles that charles the bold had participated in and when i first conceived of this campaign it was actually going to be more of like a story driven um and be more like telling his story but i kind of went away from that and just went for the historical campaign so um I hope you all will take on the challenge of bringing down the Duchy of Burgundy, um, and because I think this campaign will will give you give you a good challenge. And uh, if you have any feedback on it, I would absolutely love to hear it, good or bad. Um, and if you want to give this a rating, uh, please give it an honest rating. If you like it, give it a good rating. If you don't like it, give it a bad rating. But um, I mean. I, I would really appreciate any feedback that you have, um, any things that you, you might have a suggestion for, like if I make another campaign. Because if you know if if this is received really well, I'd be really interested in making another historical campaign. Uh, the Hundred Years' War would be an excellent subject matter for a campaign. Could also do the English War of the Roses. Could do the Knights of the Teutonic Order campaigns. Um, just, there's just so many medieval uh, campaigns that I could definitely turn into a war groove campaign. Um, so, yeah, uh, other miscellaneous notes. This is on Nintendo Switch uh, that I have this game for. So hopefully, if you're on PC or another platform, you can still download this and play it. Um, let me know if you're not. I because I, I would be I'd be really surprised, but I mean. I don't know, maybe maybe you can't, but I've seen in the list though, like I can see like made on Switch, made on PC. So um, I think my campaign is still listed there. If you if you filter by newest, uh, one player campaign, press OK. Uh, I think it's now on page two. Yeah, there it is. Um, so there's a little description there and uh, that's the code right there at the top. Um, E8QQ5MMD, and, and again, that will be in the description here. Um, and before I go, one final note. I um, want to give a really big shout out to uh, the author of this article, Albert Winkler, uh, who wrote this article, The Battle of Merton, The Invasion of Charles the Bold and Survival of the Swiss States. This was like uh, my primary source of research. Uh, I also did use a lot of Wikipedia articles, which I list the ones that I read, I listed in the description. But um, this is an excellent article. Um, this this article is is awesome. It, it really gives like a good background on the history of the conflict and, 
and some of the history of the Swiss Confederation and um, goes into detail about the, the war and some of the battles that were fought and this was this was an amazing article. I'm so glad I found this. Uh, this was huge finding this. So so big shout out to Albert Winkler, the the author of this article. Um, I I really couldn't have made this campaign as good as I could have without this. I I really believe that this 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 article was instrumental to developing this campaign. So thank you very much. Um, that's all I have. Uh, again, hopefully you really enjoy this. Uh, let me know what you think of it. Uh, use use this video to leave your comments, and um, you know if you really like it, uh, please promote it. You know, and if I get if I get a good reception on this, I'd absolutely love to um, possibly make another campaign for this. I know I have a lot of other things on on the plate for what I want to do for my channel, but. Um, I, I'm definitely not ruling out the possibility of, of making another campaign sometime. I think it would be I think it would be a really good time. So with that, uh, I hope you have a great day and uh, happy playing. See you next time. I'm Blitz from Manicene signing off.